You're gonna be just fine. I just talk, you know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me as always is the ever-quotable Jay. No quotes, because we're not doing a real movie this time. That's fair, and of course we have the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Woohoo! We are back. Cue the fucking fireworks. We've been gone for a little bit due to life's bullshit, as always. But uh, we're back, and we've got a fun show for you tonight. Kind of a more relaxed episode. But before we get into that, let's, uh, one, talk about uh, we had our anniversary in November. We did not record in November. Uh, I mean, I guess you can count this. But uh, what what is it? Five years? Happy five years? No, it's six years. Five? Is it six? Is it six? What was last year? What was oh, yeah. the Cannibal yeah, Holocaust okay. show? Yeah. If last year was our fourth anniversary, I guess it would technically would have been our fifth. I don't know. Yeah, I think We've been this here is for six a while. years. Yeah, this is this is the been here for a while anniversary. Yeah. So, <laughs> congratulations to us and congratulate uh, all you listeners for sticking it out with us. Uh, we're glad to be here. We're glad you're all listening. Uh, but with that being said, I guess let's go over Thanksgiving because that just passed. Uh, Jay, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, it was pretty good. I didn't have to work or anything. Uh, I went to. Kayla's job, uh, which is a homeless shelter, and, and fed some people, and then I went to my sister's to feed myself. Look at you, doing doing the devil's work. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth, how was yours? Uh, it was good. Did the same thing I do every year. Went down to my mom's, ate some damn good food, hung out with the family, and uh, went home and watched TV. Very nice. I, uh, I'm living with uh, my buddy Jeff and his wife Arlene. And uh, their two children, which are my second and third godchildren, after Kenneth's daughter being my first godchild, we had a very uh, small turkey and food here. We hung out and we watched Star Wars and uh, just had a very relaxing day. I really enjoyed it. And uh, that's about it. Uh, We played some video games also. Uh, Not together separately. I'm playing Cat Quest on my Switch and Jeff's playing uh, the new God of War game. So, fun times. Oh, and we watched uh, Blood Rage, which is a Thanksgiving slasher yeah, movie from is. the 80s. So, bam, we did that. Um, so, yeah, other than that, uh, happy anniversary to us. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope you had fun. Uh, the... Why, oh, computer, don't you try to make me restart my computer. No, <laughs> ma'am, we will not be uh, doing that. That's fun fine that's that's fine sorry everyone i remind you in four hours for real okay um so yeah our lovely show tonight is on movies we would like to see get remakes because you know who doesn't love remakes in the horror genre it's absolutely the greatest thing ever so I believe we, it's probably the most liked form of movie out there. If you look at groups, everyone's always, man, remakes are the best. I love the reimaginings of these old <laughs> properties. Um, they definitely did not ruin my childhood in any way. And in fact, it is more enhanced now that this movie exists. I'm pretty sure what people say when remakes are mentioned. Yeah, those are solid facts. Those are 100% what people say in all these Facebook groups. So we decided, well, let's jump on that bandwagon. And let's each pick five movies we would want to see get remade and maybe talk about a little bit of how that remake would go. Uh, And obviously, audience, this means we also want to know what you would want to see get remade and how you would go about it. So with that being said, I'm going to start out with my number five which is Orca from 1977. I would like to see Orca get remade. Um, After having some of these, like, really good, um, like, movies come out with Crawl and The Shallows and shit like that, like a more serious film on the creature feature, I kind of want to see this happen to Orca, but I want to, I got to up the ante. We're going to make it a pod of Orcas this time. Fuck, Fuck a lone Orca. 
we are going to have a pod of orcas and they are just going to like anyone who gets in their territory is just going to get fucked like they're going to destroy towns boats anything they can get their hands on they're going to destroy it because they are tired of people fucking up their ecosystem this is going to be an environmentalist film and we are going to see orcas fuck up everyone so get ready people uh, so that would be my number five is Orca. And the big thing I would want to do is make it an Orca pod. Uh, Jay, what would be your number five? All right. Number five, we're going all the way back, all the way back to the twenties with the cabinet of Dr. Caliglieri or however you say Caligari. It, yeah. So when you first gave us this topic, I started looking at like the most 100 influential horror movie lists and classic horror movie lists seeing what would be right for a remake. And I've never seen this movie, um, but I read the plot, a breakdown of the plot. I read the twist. I read how audiences reacted to it originally. And I think it's just absolutely prime for a remake with it being so old. Um, I, I would, I'd be willing to bet that a ton of people uh, don't even know about it. Uh, I never see it mentioned or anything like that. So the crazy twist that's at the end would hit with the same impact because of its age. And I think it's just ripe for the ripe for the picking. Yeah, no, that's not a bad idea. I would love to see how they do the the set for it, because like the big thing about Caligari is um, the, all the deco and angles that they use for the sets makes it look really fucking shot out and weird. So I'm that sure that would be that. interesting. I'd like to see that. Um, Kenneth, what's your number five? Let me see here. My number five. And see, I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to decide what I want to put at the very bottom. <sighs> I think I'll probably... I want to see a remake of Cujo. Oh, ho, ho. I mean, don't get me wrong. The original was amazing. And, and you know, the bad thing about it is, is if you left it up to people in Hollywood now, the whole damn thing would be CG and it would suck. But if you could get the right kind of people to do it now and just kind of update it a little and whatever else, I think that, I think that would be pretty cool and keep the original ending. You know what I'm saying? Where the boy dies. I think that would be, uh, I think that'd be pretty awesome because, you know, I, I really enjoy the, the endings that are not happy. I really like the ones where there's a lot of despair, you know, kind of like the end of the mist. Yeah. Yeah. So you would definitely want to keep it using real dogs, animatronics, and a guy in a dog suit. Well, not the dog suit, obviously, but I think I, I would really like to keep it at real dogs. You know what I mean? Uh, good training, all the rest of that, because I think it would be I think it would be actually really really good um, if you could just get the right kind of people together. And at this current moment, I mean, with us being on a bandwagon of you know redoing Stephen, uh, Stephen King. King, you know what I mean. You know, because now we got it, and then we got the stand the, on CBS All Access, and then other ones. Might as well go ahead and hit on that one too. Yeah, I mean, I, what do you have against the guy in the dog suit? I thought he did good in the movie. Uh, Quit hating on people in suits. You know what it really reminds me of, <laughs> or actually, I guess it would be the other way around. The uh, the really big animatronic dog in the Sandlot. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> that's what it kind of reminds me of that's fair um all right so my number four uh is the japanese film suicide club i would like to see this updated for social media i think the question of how we are connected and the trend of people killing themselves is something that absolutely still fits in to this day except now we can make it a global thing it doesn't necessarily have to be just japan it could be anywhere you could almost do it as an anthology where we're looking at how different places are dealing with this i just think there's so much room there to really get into it and i think you could now update it to kind of drop the scion sono uh weird unanswered shit um and instead make it a more of like a technology internet social media suicide anthology flick i'd watch that yeah an extreme version of the todd pod shit yeah exactly 
Also, I think. Fun fact: I'm wearing my Kill the Cat Suicide Club T-shirt right now. Actually, nice, very nice. I know I picked it for a right reason. Uh, <laughs> Jay, what would be your number four? My number four uh, would be another classic, uh, and it would be Frankenstein. I want. It's been. I mean, it's in uh, public domain, so anybody can do it anytime that they want. Um, but it's been forever since we've had a even halfway decent Frankenstein movie at all. Um, but I want one that's accurate to the book. I want one that uh, covers everything and they like make it a nice slow burn, lots of tension and drama, but make it as accurate as, as absolutely possible uh, to the book. I thought, I thought the one that Kenneth Branagh did was really, really good. The one that had him and um, Robert De Niro in it. I don't think I've seen that one. That was from the nineties yeah. though. But it's yeah. still been forever. Hey, uh, I was just saying, I think, it, yeah, it has been a while, but I still, I still think that one was pretty good. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. It's just called Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And, um, and, and oddly enough, uh, the the guy who played Darth Vader in his suit just died. He actually played uh, Frankenstein monster in one of the Hammer flicks. Oh, fun! I did not know that. Hmm. Yeah. So rest in peace to him. Yep. Definitely. So you want a remake that's more that's that's way closer to the book. Yeah. Okay, I can feel that. Um Kenneth, what do you got for number four? Psychomania. Oh, I don't even know this movie. Yeah, me either. <laughs> it's a movie that came out in the seventies and it's about this um this group of bikers in uh in England and the the head of the group um figures out a way to make a deal with the devil that if he kills himself and when he kills himself, if he thinks hard enough about coming back, he will. But the thing about it is, it's a deal with the devil. So if you don't do it just correctly, if you don't fully believe that you're going to come back, you won't. And so obviously you're going straight down. And when him and the majority of his crew, because he gets the rest of his crew to do it. And when, when they all kind of come back, they, you, you know they're virtually invincible so you know they can call, go out and cause whatever fucking havoc that they want to cause and there's no you know there's no repercussions i mean you know there's there's a scene where the cops try to shoot them you know what i mean and it doesn't do anything um they try taking them down they end up killing people i mean all this other kind of stuff it's actually really good it's not really exploitation at all but it's just a really good movie and um I would love to see that one remade and updated because it's definitely got that hardcore 70s uh, British look to it. You know, and not, and I don't mean like, not even, you know, like Hammer style. I mean, like, you know, it, you can definitely tell. Like British very, Easy Rider? Yeah, something like that. It is very dated, but you just got to watch the movie. It's a, it's a really good movie, and there's a lot of stuff about, you know, um, like the place that they go that they go hang out it's called the seven witches and there's a lot of uh there's a lot of uh you know and the seven witches kind of looks like a, a stonehenge kind of thing and the reason why it's called the seven witches is because the uh the witches that were there made a deal with the devil and they backed out on the deal and the devil turned them into stone and the seven pieces that are there are the seven witches the seven stone blocks are the seven or each one is a different witch this movie sounds so, dope as fuck i gotta yes, watch this <laughs> it's it's I've got it. It's really good, man. But like I said, I mean, it's a slow burn. It's a really slow burn, but it's very. It, you can de it's definitely got that fucking late sixties, early seventies supernatural devil, witchcraft that whole that whole thing to it. Interesting. Yeah, I I, I think this would be a good good one. Do you throw a little bit more action in it? Make it a bit more faster pace. Yeah, I mean it's it's like definitely a good one. Watch on Prime. Uh, throw it, throw some gore in it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think I think it would be good. I'm down. All right. So for my third pick, for my number three, we are going. I wanted to remake a Giallo. There's been a few attempts to make like new Giallos. Um, lime or strawberry? <laughs> uh, hey, not Giallo. <laughs> We're talking Giallo, baby. Um. I couldn't help myself. Because a lot of the, the, the new Giallos uh, feel more like art house films, and they don't necessarily feel like Giallos to me. 
I'm looking at you, Amir. Sorry, Duncan. And so I want to go back, and I was like, what what Giallo should I do? And I was like, you know what, let's go back to like the first full-fledged Giallo. And that's Blood and Black Lace by Mario Bava. And I was like, keep keep everything in this movie. In fact, this is one where I'd almost say you could do a shot-for-shot remake of it just in updated terms um like you could you could i i don't know 100 percent what i would do to change this or make it different i just want to see a giallo made nowadays that doesn't feel like an art house film like i know giallos are all style over substance um but the style is is more of that like slick like cool vibe and and the colors are just fucking great and there's all these weird fucking shots but it doesn't feel art housey it doesn't feel pretentious and that's what i want i like i want to see that again i want that to be a thing that's in my life so i would love to see a slick stylized remake of blood and black lace but i do not want it to be a pretentious art house film uh, I don't have either one of y'all seen Blood and Black Lace. I have nope. not. Have I didn't. Not. I didn't think so. With it being a Giallo, y'all are not very versed in Giallo. Um, it's not that I'm not very versed. It's that uh, I just don't get into them like you do. So therefore, there is no verse needed. I mean, that still means you're not very versed. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Kenneth was like, well, there's no verse needed. You don't need to write this song. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's all I could think about. It was like him, like, tearing up a song and throwing it out and just being like, this song is not needed. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I'd really I'd really like to fucking see this. Um, maybe one day. I would like to see a rebirth of the Giallo. I think they're a little too nonsensical to actually work nowadays, but I'd still really love to see it. Um, Jay, what have you got? I mean, nonsensical. Nicholas Cage is still getting work, so I think he'd be fine. No, That's a valid point. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, speaking of that, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, uh, go ahead. I was watching this uh, watching this thing the other day. It was like, uh, you know, one of those videos that pop up, random videos like from Looper or something that pop up on YouTube. And uh, it was it was about Nicolas Cage and the reason why he does all these straight-to-video movies. There's two reasons. Number one, he owes a bunch of money to the IRS. Number two, because he can do whatever the hell he wants. And when he does these movies, he's not bound by any of the extreme high dollar bullshit that a lot of the big big money features are or whatever he still gets paid he still gets to do his crazy fucking screaming weird shit that he loves to do and he's not bound by anybody and that's actually in an interview he was he he basically said that he was like it makes money i owe money and i get to do whatever the fuck i want so who cares yeah i mean it makes sense um yeah i still think you're a terrible actor nicholas cage uh, not that you give half a shit about what I think. Um, I'm right now, I still I'm like so upset. Uh, <laughs> Color Out of Space was terrible, and so was your acting in it. Nicolas Cage. So. <laughs> just gonna throw that out there. Do we need to do a podcast on Color From Out of Space? Either one of y'all really like that movie? I mean, I liked it more than you, but not enough that I need to do a uh, a podcast on it. I feel like that's one that I'd like to argue about with someone who like really enjoys it. Maybe we can do a podcast on movies based on Lovecraft's works. Ugh. No, what we need to do is a horror coliseum for Nicolas Cage. Oh. And what movies would go up against you? I don't know. I'm not a Nicolas Cage expert. What two Nicolas Cage horror movies would go well? <laughs> Mom and Dad and fucking Color From Out of Space? I think if we're going to talk Nicolas Cage, we've got to talk Wicker Man remake. I don't even want to discuss that. That movie was terrible. It will lose <laughs> against any movie you put up against it. We, 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 we say we're doing that next, and all of a sudden Kenneth goes into a coma. <laughs> I mean, It's another you'll... year before we record again. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Fans, let us know. 
Tell us what two Nicholas Cage movies should be. I like Nicholas Cage, and The Wicker Man was so terrible. <laughs> pretty, pretty awful. Um. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Jay, what was your third movie? Uh, my third movie is Evil Dead, but not a remake of Evil Dead. A sequel to the remake of Evil Dead, because it was way too good not to have a sequel. But that's um, a sequel, not a remake. You had, during this original conversation, you had said remakes or sequels, and I wrote this list months ago. Wait, 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 no, wait, no, wait. I said remakes or reboots. Wait, yeah. So think about this, though. Series. What if it went in the same vein as the first Evil Dead and the second Evil Dead? I mean, you could call it Evil Dead, the remake of Evil Dead 2. You could call it a reboot of the sequel because series. Evil, Fuck, Evil, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2. Hold on, y'all are talking over each other at this point. Uh, Jay, finish your statement. Oh, I was saying, um, it is a reboot to the sequel series that hasn't had any movement since the sequel came out forever ago. No, but it's still a sequel. It's not a reboot. But a, a reboot can be a sequel. Like Creed is a sequel to Rocky, but it's still a reboot of the Rocky series. I don't feel like it's a reboot to the Rocky series. It's a, it's a continuation of the Rocky series. A reboot changes things from the first one. It cannot be a direct sequel. Because it's a reimagining. It's rebooting the entire franchise. I don't think that's accurate. Or at least that's not how I've always seen it anyway. Kenneth, thoughts? I, yeah, I was just about to say, damn, the original Evil Dead 2 was a remake slash sequel to the original Evil Dead. Well, it was only a, a remake because they could not use the footage from the previous movie and they felt they had to explain it. Otherwise, that wouldn't have been in there. But, I mean, because it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, but do you feel like, okay, like, his Creed thing, is Creed a reboot or a sequel? Or do you agree with him that it's both? I agree that it's both. And the reason being is kind of like, you remember that conversation that me and you had about X-Men Days of Futures Past? No, enlighten me. (laughs) I had a conversation a long time ago about how they made that movie, and in that, it was a sequel, and it rebooted the whole series for them to start over again. Oh, yeah, you're right, because they had the time travel. They could do that. Oh, fuck, that that shoots a hole right into my argument. Oh, God damn it. Either way, we can call it Evil Dead 2 and call it a remake of Evil Dead 2, but the story that I want is completely different (laughs) than the Evil Dead 2. (laughs) Do you what like? Do you have an idea of what the story would be? Kind of. So I was thinking one of two ways. Like we could have it so that because you know almost the apocalypse happened at the end. They were summoning the the crazy end times demon, and she had to fight it and stuff. What if like the deadite stuff spreads to the city, and now she's has to go take care of it there? Because uh, that's not really something we ever got to see Ash do. Um, besides the the couple of quick shots and when he's telling a story in Smart. Um, but something like that, or maybe you can go a completely different direction and have her like be on trial for murdering all her friends. <laughs> the Emily Rose version of Evil yeah. Dead. <laughs> Those you know are the, the crazy thing. I, came up. I just want, I just want a sequel to the to the original remake. <laughs> Those you words know, don't make any sense. I want a sequel to the remake, and it can be a remake of Evil Dead Two, but not. I get what you're saying, Jay. But the crazy okay. thing is... I'm glad someone saying, does. What you were saying just now in an article that I read recently about where they were going to go in the direction is whoever is going to be the protagonist in the newest of the, in the Evil Dead series is going to be fighting deadites in the city. Oh, well, fucking cool. Because I know they're planning on making a new Evil Dead movie, but I know it has absolutely nothing to do with the remake. Yeah, because uh, for some reason they're wanting to stick... And I mean, I get it. You know what I mean? The 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 Bruce Campbell thing and and sticking with it, especially after the series and so on. I get it. But at the same time, man, I agree with you also. The remake was just too good not to follow up with it. I agree. And here's what I would like to see. Uh, my sequel idea for Evil Dead would be, um, you know, the cops showing up, all these dead bodies, fucking blood everywhere. They can't explain it. Uh, she gets put in a psych ward and uh, the deadites end up coming to the psych ward trying to get her. That There's another podcast episode we need to do. S- top five sequels and what the story would be for the sequel. 
Now that is what I'm talking about. Like that would be a really fucking fun episode. Also, okay, let's. All right. Uh, good job, Jay. I disagree with it being a remake, <laughs> but I'm gonna give it to you because I offered to show you my list ahead of time. You said, "Nah, it's all good." <laughs> I wanted to be surprised. And you um, are now. <laughs> I am um, Kenneth. Uh, surprise me. What do you got next? <laughs> Altered states. Altered state is that. Uh, I always confuse that one with Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, Altered States is the one where the guy is, like, really into psychedelics. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and basically he's, like, trying to find, you know, he, like, goes over the world and he's trying to get to his primitive side, so to speak. And he ends up ch- changing the fucking brain waves and how everything works in his brain some kind of which way. And I can't explain it because there's a lot of crazy shit in this. But he ends up tripping so hard, basically, that he regresses back to, like, it's almost like time travel, but physically. So, like, he goes from being his self now and then he regresses back to Cro-Magnon state. This looks ridiculous. I want to watch it. Uh, it's a uh, dude it's actually really good and it's really really thick so like you know and, and and eventually he ends up regressing all the way to the primordial ooze from which we came from so what would you do in a in a modern remake like do you just the introduce thing- like the new drugs like is it just joe rogan convincing him to take dmt <laughs> yeah. do you know what that if i were to actually do the movie i would probably put something like that in it like he he starts this trip from listening to someone talk about it on a podcast, and it's like it's no, influence. like he's a scientist or whatever, and he fucking ends up going on to like Joe Rogan's podcast to have the conversation about it, and that's like one of the things that's in the movie because now you know, like like any time that now that like going but kind of piggybacking off your social media thing when you were talking about Suicide Club. Anytime that we get an get an eye eyeful or a glimpse of anything that's going on from a scientific standpoint, it's all online. You know, and unfortunately because of all the kind of bullshit that we got going on now, damn people don't pay attention to that as much. But that would be a place to start if you were the type of person that was interested in this kind of thing and you were trying to convince other people in the world the value of of this particular thing so actually you know i know it was meant to be a joke but in reality if i were making the movie i would totally if i could get joe rogan onto it because joe rogan's podcast is so predominant and he is so into psychedelics and this particular subject matter being wrapped around psychedelics i would totally fucking shoot a scene where the guy was on a podcast for joe rogan you know you know what i would like to say i would like to almost almost as if it's two movies cut together uh, you have the part of the movie that's from his brain, like from like what he's experiencing, all of that, and then you have the other part of the movie that's like the them docu- like making a docu- a documentary like about the him, reality of what's happening. Like, and so yeah. it's like you get to see what's happening from his point of view, and then you get to see like the outside point of view of what the the people filming him are seeing, right. and just how like trippy that would kind of be, like like a a weird half found footage but half first person yeah and see that would be fantastic and the and the and the thing about it is is like there's actually a lot of scientific i, I guess uh scientific curiosity based around this kind of thing because like um in this movie the guy ends up combining using psychedelic drugs with being in a uh sensory deprivation chamber and there's a lot, a lot of information out there about being in a sensory deprivation chamber sober, you know, of what it, what you can achieve by being in one of those, just going in there sober. And so I think in, in, in today's world and how much like the, the viewpoint on things like psychedelics and and different kinds of drugs and legalization and all the rest of that. And, and the fact that more people now are open minded to the things that you can accomplish by utilizing what has always had a negative stigma for so long. 
I think that in today's climate, the type of movie would actually do very well and it would and it would fit more because like during the late 60s, early 70s, we had that kind of thing going on, but it had a negative stigma to it. You know, like Easy Rider was a fantastic fucking movie. The whole goddamn time, the guys are tripping in a movie. But the movie itself had a negative stigma for what it represented at the time period. Now, we wouldn't have nearly as much of a negative uh, stigma going on to what we're discussing and and basically what you're trying to portray by combining the scientific aspects of it and the, uh, the mental fucking uh, expansion that you're trying to get, you know, uh, uh, Timothy Leary, all the rest of that kind of stuff, and putting it into what we see today, yeah, I think it would be a fucking fantastic film all the way around. It also makes me really want, like, a movie, like, based on, like, something to do with MK Ultra. All right. Like, That'd be cool. that would be fucking fucked up, too. Um, okay, yeah, that's fucking fantastic. I would love to see that, like, oh, um... So moving on to my number two, I had a hard choice. I had two different movies here. Uh, they're both creature features, but not natural creature features. Um, and I ended up going with Pumpkinhead. Now, I know it's going to be CGI. I've accepted that. CGI looks pretty pretty fucking good if it's done right. So I'm, I'm going to accept that. Um, but I would like to see a new, a new version of pumpkin head you know these teenagers you know from the north going down to the south for whatever reason like on the way to the beach or something and they like end up riding on a motorcycle killing the kid uh, of these southern deep southern people and like having pumpkin head like come up um but i decided what can i do to make it fucking different and i was like what if it was a fucking found footage movie like, what if we did Pumpkinhead as a found footage movie? And just think of, like, uh, like because I, I, over the past, like, two years, I've gotten way more into found footage movies thanks to movies like Hell House LLC. And I was just thinking about how fucking creepy and, like, creepy, creepy and scary it would be um, to have a scene where, like, Pumpkinhead's in the background and you can barely fucking see him. Or, like, him going across the door or something like that. Um, so I, I would just fucking really like to see like this modern age, like take on pumpkin head as a found footage movie. That'd be really awesome. I'd watch the shit out of that. Yeah, me too. Cause so, I used to like, you bring up hell house LLC. I used to have a damn thing about now. I didn't really care for found footage. I was just like, eh, whatever. And then when you told me to watch those, I watched all three of those and I was just like, okay, I'm back in this game. Yeah, that's what happened to me. Like, I don't, I don't really like old found footage movies. I don't like the found footage movies in the nineties. I don't even really care for the ones of the early two thousands after the Paranormal Activity boom. But um, here lately, I, I've been watching a lot of the ones that are coming out. I just watched that one uh, host on Shutter. It's another one like Unfriended. It's all on a computer screen. Yeah, you told me about that. Uh, and it was really fucking good. I really liked it. There, there was only really one misstep in the movie where I felt like they kind of went, they showed too much. But I really liked it. I, but everyone knows I fucking love internet horror. So you put internet horror on there and I'm signed up. Thanks, fear.com. Uh, well, thank you to the chick that, that blew me in the movie theaters while I was watching fear.com. I appreciate you, uh, you know, bonding me to internet horror like that. Um, Aww, so Jay, what's your number two? All right. Number two, uh, it Stephen King. <laughs> so what? I, yeah, listen, <laughs> listen, I know we got the mini series. Listen, listen, I know we got those new movies, but neither of them are entirely accurate. I listened to the book, uh, around the time. Part two came out. It? Yeah. All 40 something hours of it. And there's a lot of shit in there, man. Yeah. There is a lot of shit in there. And it really just needs to be a TV series. And I think someone like Netflix or Amazon, where they're not restrained by cable standards, uh, so they're not worried about what's being shown, so we can get all the all the gore and uh, all the actual scary imagery that comes with it, needs to be included. You could do the whole thing in two or three ten-episode, hour-long episode seasons... But what I really want 
is the formatting of the book to translate to the screen. Both the miniseries and the movies showed first the kids' stuff, then the adult stuff. But in the book, it literally bounces back and forth chapter to chapter. The very first chapter is when Georgie gets eaten by it. The very second chapter is them getting the call from Mike as adults. And that's how I want the formatting of the episodes to go, culminating with the final episode where both the kids and the adults are killing it in their respective times at the same time. The finale is going down at the same time. The... I want the interludes included with all the little stuff, uh, little break episodes that we could get uh, covering those interludes. And I just want it all in there. And that's what I want out of an It remake. Uh, the only problem I would see in filming it is the kids aging. Um, you know, over the course of four seasons, the kids are supposed to stay the same age, but they're gonna, in real life, they're going to get older. Yeah, you can even see it in the second, in the second of the movie. You can see where they had to add a little bit of CGI to bring them. Yeah, bring them I back know. A little yeah, bit. that's that's something, and there there are a couple ways you can get around it. Uh, one of which would be shooting the entire thing literally all at once, even if it takes a year to shoot, um, and then just releasing it. That, of course, would there's some logistics that that would be hard to work out. Um, but since this is all fantasy anyway, <laughs> that that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I would like to actually see some of the interludes, especially um, the um, the black owned club on the army base that gets burned yep. down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's it called? The black spot. Black spot, yeah. I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah. That, in, that in would a be dope. World, that is the that is what I would get out of an it adaptation. I would and, and see, I agree with you because I'd really like to see all of the individual kids' fears and stuff like that, where it's not just mashed together. Because, like you know, in the book, you've got this whole thing about Mike getting chased by this giant bird. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, they talk about he because he is not even in. And it's because he fucking watched Rodan as a kid. Yep, he watched Rodan. <laughs> yep. And so, and so, yeah, I mean, and then, you know, the uh, the scene where the fucking little psychopath is getting killed by these fucking weird flesh-colored leeches or whatever the fuck they are. Yep. Yeah, yeah. what do you, but do you still cut out the gangbang scene? No. <laughs> no, leave it in. How do you film that? Um, well... <laughs> Just CG not, in the dark, just, homie. Just not graphically, but it's you know. I maybe, mean, maybe that's one thing that can be rewritten. I don't know. You could throw a but, few animated areas in there. I don't know if you could if you well, can get away with graphic. with make, a four it into like making out or something. Well, they know. they had a fourteen year old blow a dude for Megan is missing. So fuck it, right? Yeah, fuck. You it. know, <laughs> we had the movie Kids, we had the movie Thirteen, we had the movie Megan is missing. Fuck it, we'll just do it. Yep, perfect. The 14-year-olds are fucking now, anyway. <laughs> How old are the kids in the book? Eight or nine, I think. No, I, I think, think they were like 12, 11. Yeah, they, 12. they're preteens. They're fucking. All right, that works. <laughs> These Hollywood kids are fucking at 14-year-olds. I mean, it's mostly the boys getting fucked by 40-year-old dudes, but they're fucking. That, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, and in the book, I mean, you know, Bev was fucking everybody, so. Mm, fair. Uh, all right, Kenneth, uh, you got to follow up that. What do you got? <laughs> all right, let me see. Where where do I want to go here? Um, I'm trying to decide which one I want to put in the first. Um, uh, Scooby Doo. I want Scooby Doo to be remade into a fucking horror movie, like Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Uh, the, the that would be dope. Out, the original Scooby Doo movie, the first one that they put out, whatever that was, when they went to, you know, wherever. Mm-hmm. I don't care as long as it's a Scooby Doo movie, which done full fledged horror remake, whichever animated one you want to remake, the original live action, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Have Matthew Lillard play Shaggy. You know, because I was upset that he wasn't, you know, the voice of uh, Shaggy in the new Scoob animated movie, and. Make it a horror movie. Yeah, Make also it a legit horror movie. And none of, and none of this Shaggy being a vegan bullshit. No, none of that. When either. did that happen? Uh, Casey Kasem made Shaggy be a vegan at some point, and he would not voice him in the show unless he would be a vegan and never eat meat. Oh, that's so dumb. Yeah, that's happened for decades. 
I never really paid it any mind. But the point being is that, yeah, I want it to be a fucking horror movie. I want it to be scary. I want it to be creepy. I don't care if they're trying to figure out who the slasher is. I want it, you know, where they where the clues are dead bodies. Wow. Yeah, I would like to see that. And th- there's tons of stuff they could do with, like, uh, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island popped in my head because I think that's probably, like, the closest they've ever gone to, like, full horror. Um, I don't know, man. This new show that they put out, um, fuck, uh, damn it, I can't think of it now. Mystery Incorporated. Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. It's on Netflix and it's on fucking uh, Boomerang. That one is, like, it gets into legit supernatural stuff. Like really? Shaggy, yeah, like Shaggy and Scooby both in it. Like Velma is 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 wigged out because it's because it's fucking real. There's legit fucking supernatural shit going on in this cartoon. Interesting. So, I may have to give it a watch. Yeah, it's it's a good one, man. Like like uh, Jade started watching it first, and then Easton started watching it a lot. And uh, Cheyenne's really into Scooby Doo, so I was like, "Fuck it, I'll watch it." And I watched the whole fucking series, man. It's actually really good. There's some good shit that's going on in there, but um, you know, that's what I want. I want it to be scary. I want it to be creepy. I want it to, you know, be fucking, you know, uh, 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 like a combination between damn Scream and something else with Scooby Doo. You know, where you actually have people dying, where you actually have them trying to solve a mystery of somebody that's killing people, whether it's a ghost or zombie, whatever the fuck it is. I want it to be legit. Blood and guts. I think that would be fucking amazing if somebody would. I'm down. 100% I'm down. Absolutely. I'd watch the shit out of that. Yeah. I've been wanting it for years. I'm with you on it. Um, All right. Here is my number one. Uh, I want a Hellraiser remake, but done in Japan. I want Takashi Miike <laughs> wow. to remake Hellraiser. Holy shit. And I want Takashi Miike not to do any of his goofy shit. I want him to do his hardcore shit. I'm talking fucking audition. I'm talking fucking imprint. I, I, I'm talking fucking mean, vicious, brutal shit. That'd be a badass movie, dude. Like, I want to see the Japanese take on Hellraiser. I like. In fact, I don't even care if he remakes... I, he can honestly just do a pinhead movie. However he wants to do it, as long as it, like, follows the rules oh, set forth. Let's let Scarlet Gospels. Let's let... Okay, he's not good. No, we can't do that because we can't do that in Japan because CGI in Japan is awful. Um, <laughs> it would be so good, though. So, we can't do that. But We can have him direct an American movie. We could. If we can give him an American fucking budget, then I'm down. But, like, I really want to give him just fucking free range to make a pinhead story. I he doesn't... That would be really good. I, and I'm down if he wants to remake the first movie, because I really fucking love the first movie, and I think he would do... He would bring out the creepy incest stuff way more. Um from the first movie but just in general like to see the japanese take on the movies is just oh my god it would be so fucking good and mike would just fucking murder it i mavis agrees do you hear mavis that's not mavis who which cat is which one is that poe larry I don't know. It wants. It's meowing because my door is closed and it wants inside. Oh, Mavis is passed out in a dining room chair. Which cat that is? <laughs> Probably Poe, the black cat. Yeah, Probably. Mavis just got fixed, and today is her first day without her cone on her head. Woohoo! <laughs> um, but yeah, so Hellraiser Japanese style, Takashi Miike at the helm. Let's make this fucking happen, Clive. Give Takashi Miike the rights to do this, please. Um, so with that being said, uh, Jay, let's go into your last one. All right. My last one is Nightmare on Elm Street, and I've got some grand plans for this property. So first, I want it to be a trilogy, so I'm cheating. I get three movies with this last one. I want it to be a trilogy with absolutely no sequels after the third movie. I want it to be a beginning, middle, and end story without getting into weird reasons why Freddy keeps coming back. I want the first movie 
to be Human Freddy, Springwood Slasher, killing people, kidnapping kids, taking them to the boiler room, murdering them. Does he fuck them? No, we don't need a child fucker. Just a child killer. It's fine. Um, I want him to get caught. I want him to go to jail. I want him to go to, or I want him to get off on the technicality. And I want the movie to end with him being set on fire by the parents of the kids. And I want um, him to get his powers from whatever dream demon we decide is going to give him his powers. Second movie, Dream Freddy. First, consistent powers. All explained, clear as day, through his actions, without any weird, non-consistent bullshit. Okay? Comes back. It can be however many years later. Starts killing the kids um, that are now grown up into teenagers, just like the first one. Can I have a request? Can the lead actress close her fucking mouth? Yes. Okay, appreciate it. Of the casting agents. (laughs) (laughs) Um. But yeah, this will be classic Freddy, right? T- twisting your fears into dreams, into nightmares to manipulate you, to get you all pumped up on fear and then fucking end you. Good to go. One survivor through whatever, you know, because we're going to go basic 80s with this. So at some point they're going to do research, find out the name of the dream demon, how it works. They're going to believe that them just simply being around is what's powering him. So after whatever final conflict we come up with, they peace out. They're like, I got to go. I'm the one who's keeping this guy here, but if I'm out of town, he can't have any powers, good to go. Several years later, this person's watching news. She sees that the killings are start, immediately recognize who it is. She's like, shit, I gotta go back, I gotta stop him. One final showdown, it can be like Dream Warriors where the kids are in a mental institution, or however, we can sit up however, but again, consistent powers throughout, a, a beginning, middle, and end of the story, not a million sequels, and just good all around. And that's what I want out of my dream Nightmare on Elm Street remake. So is it going to be like catch line Freddy or is it going to be like the darker Freddy? Like what no, kind of Freddy are we looking gonna, at? The, the closest he's going to get to to sarcasm will be like how he was in part three. But that's a, a fine line. I'd like to keep him around part two where what he says can be funny as an older adult, we're watching them, you know, they can like, they can be funny lines, but in real life, they're kind of creepy. Um, and that's, that's, I want my dark Freddy. I want him scary and, and malevolent. Gotcha. Well, you know what? As a, as a person who's not a fan of Nightmare on Elm Street, I'd fucking watch this. This sounds solid. This sounds like a, a, a way to give, with the second movie you give the old fans, you know, the nostalgia, but with the first movie you give the fans something they've never had before that I know a lot of them have wanted. And with the third movie, that's where you can kind of really, that's where you can kind of like really play around and really like make it your own thing. Exactly. So I'm fucking down. As long as the main actress can shut her fucking mouth. <laughs> um, I think I think she'll be able to handle that. <laughs> that pretty dope. All right, uh, Kenneth, your last movie. What do you got? And people are gonna hate me for this. Good, fuck them. I want the crow to be remade. Oh wow, let's oof. Ooh. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I, I want to hear what your idea is because I'm with you on that. You know, there's been the so main actor shit. won't die in the middle of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Um, <clears throat> there's been so much talk over the years about it's going to get remade. It's going to get remade. We're going to get this person to do it. We're going to get this person to do it. Blah blah blah. You know, the thing about it is, is what the biggest thing that I would want out of a movie is I definitely want James Obar to be involved because. The entirety of the the original comic was based off of his loss. That's what it was based off of, his own despair. That was where that came out of. And I want to see a movie that is based, that is taken very seriously, because... The original was taken very seriously, and you can't take a like I like as as intrigued as I was to see Jason Momoa playing Eric Draven. As intrigued as I was about it, I don't think that he would be a good fit. He's too For, big. I was hoping not, Tom Hiddleston. Well, it's not just the too big part of it. 
Jason Momoa is just too happy of a person. I mean, even I mean, every time you see him, he's smiling. And then even when he was all serious and shit in fucking uh, Game of Thrones, he still was like, he just did not come off as sorrowful to me, you know. And 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 that's the kind of thing that you would have to have in in the driving force behind this person coming back to life is the pain of loss and the revenge for him having to go through that pain, his significant other having to go through that pain and them having to be separated from each other based on this, based on this unfortunate series of events. And you have to have the type of person that can come off that can come across that way. Brandon Lee did a great job. I'm not saying that he didn't, you know, the movie was fantastic. It's one of my favorite movies. I, I, it was like, you know, the, the main staple of my teen angst, you know, I watched that movie every day for like a year, you know, and I want some, I want whoever does it to follow very closely to the source material, really spend the time finding the perfect actor. I don't give a shit if you scour the fucking world, finding the perfect actor. The bad thing about it is, is if you're going to be able to find the perfect actor that can pull off the sorrowful shit, still have the musician aspect of it, and still be able to fit the strength and the anger to go along with it. You got to have all those things involved. And do you so, have anyone in mind? Not right off the top of my head, no. How, how do you feel about the Tom Hiddleston? You know, going from Loki to the Crow. Going from what? Loki. No, I don't. Okay, I had to think about who that was. And no, I don't think he could do it either. Really? I, really I thought he could fucking do it. No, I, I really don't. I think, you know, because it, be, it would be difficult for me to be able to separate him from Loki. Because, I mean, you got to think about it, man. I mean, and I think that's one of the bad things about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a lot of these people that are in these movies are now only going to be associated as that character because they've been involved in these movies for fucking, you know, 15 years or whatever it is. And so that's the unfortunate thing. I, I, mean, I don't have that problem. Like, I, I watched I, I, Dr. Doolittle, really do. and at no do point was I like, I, this is yeah. Iron Man, not Dr. Doolittle. Yeah, but see, the thing about it is, it's like, when, when you got somebody like Robert Downey Jr., who has a significant career of being a whole bunch of different other shit, him I can understand not, not associating with. But the thing about it is, I'll never be able to not associate, um, fuck, what's his name? Hang on. Name the act character. I'll never be able to not associate Chris Evans with fucking Captain America. Oh, really? Because he's been See, in a I, ton of stuff. Yeah, yeah I don't have that issue. Stuff before it, but now I'll never be able to associate him as anything else. And don't get me wrong, there's other movies that he's in that I like. You know, uh, I think Push was another one that he was in that I really liked. I would have cast Tom Hiddleston right now for it. I, and I, I just wouldn't. I couldn't do it. I just don't think that he would pull. I just don't think that he would pull it off. I just don't. That's what I'm saying. That's the, that's the hard thing about it. I want to see the movie remade, but I want the due diligence to be done to make it as amazing of a movie as it can be. Like, I've got the original comics in fucking hardback. You know? I've got the special edition. I've got them all in... I've got, a, I've got the all the original comics. I am a huge fan. That's the reason why I'm saying it. It, it, would, it would have to be done very, very, very well. And that's actually part of the reason why, as much as I want it, I'm glad that it's not there yet. Hmm. Interesting. Now, uh, Kenneth, you, originally when you made your list, you had a few non-horror movies in your list. I'm kind of curious as to what they were. I did, I did. Um, I, made, I, I made you change them. All right, let me, you want me to give I'm you all dick. three of them? Yeah, yeah, what were they? Okay, uh... <laughs> All right, we'll start with the first one, Highlander. Okay, I'll pass on that. No, dude. I'd watch that. Think about it, dude. Again, if you could get somebody that fucking really cared about the source material, and like and like wanted to put source material for Highlander, the original movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, wanting to like really cared about the story and really cared about everything that was gone into it, and then you know, uh, not try to make it some weird alien shit for the second one. Uh, If if you did that. And then you put all the new shit that we've got in it. I mean, can you imagine the fucking damn, the fight between, um, fuck, now I can't even remember his Connor. name. The main character, huh? Is it Say his it. name Connor? 
Yeah, between Connor McLeod and the Kurgan. Can you imagine that with fucking like all the uh, all the fucking uh, choreography and shit that we do now? Yeah, I always thought it would work better. Like even even watching the original, like man, these like it's a great movie because of the story, but those fights could have used a little bit of. Yeah, dude. Did y'all ever watch? Did y'all ever watch the the animated movie from the nineties? I had it on VHS. Yeah, there's an animated Highlander movie. No. Uh, I had it on VHS, and I watched it all the time, and it's really the only thing I really know about Highlander. Interesting. So, I watched it once. Like, I've seen all the other... I've seen all the movies, including that one. I've seen that one once, and I've seen the entire series, the TV series. It was, it, And I actually really enjoyed that. And I think Highlander remade with the standards that we have now and the time put into choreography... And, and, and all the effects that we've got now, man, it would be badass. Did you like Endgame? I love the story behind it, yes. The bad thing about it was, is, you know, Connor's not supposed to age, and he looks really aged in that movie. Well, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, but, I mean, and then and the same thing with Duncan in that movie. I mean, you can definitely see the age on both of these guys, and they're supposed to be immortal and not age. All right, so what's what's the second one? Um, da, 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 Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Not Robin Hood, Men in Tights. We do no. need a new Robin Hood movie, I, and I want one. I like, thought we had a Robin Hood movie a couple years ago. And it was also, fucking oh yeah, that awful. Was, that was that was uh, yeah, that wasn't very great. <laughs> it was terrible. And I love terrible action movies, and even I haven't been in a rush to rewatch that. Uh, okay, that movie was birthed out of this guy on YouTube, and and y'all know how much I'm into archery. I've gotten you guys into it. All right. It was birthed off of this guy, and I can't remember what his name is for the life of me, but he did all these trick shots and where he's, like, jumping off of shit and shooting. And, and, and they were and, like, let's put that in a movie. Well, he actually was fucking on set as the advisor for the archery shit. So that's the reason why you got all that weird craziness of dude from uh, Kingsman upside down shooting his bow and shit. Yo, I love the Kingsman. That was a really good movie. Um, but it's the guy that plays Eggsy. He's in the he's 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 Robin Hood. Yo, I love Eggsy. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So that movie was terrible. I want Prince of Thieves, the actual storyline and everything. I think it would be cool. All right, fair enough. What was the third? Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> no, there's there does not need to be a live action Dragon Ball Z movie. There already is one, and it was there, fucking awful. Nope, there was not. There's never there, there was a live action Dragon Ball movie that happened, but it was Asia, and we didn't really watch it. But America's never never made a live action Dragon Ball Z movie. Um, we don't. We've never had that. I don't think we should start now. Yeah, I want it. I so, want it. I had um, I did have one more horror movie that was on my list. Um, that I that that is the one I was saying I was debating between it and Pumpkinhead. Uh, and that was Creature from the Black Lagoon, because I th- I do think it would work nowadays. Um, I would like to see a jungle adventure with that movie. I just really don't know like who to direct it, how to go about it. I don't want people being like, "We already got it with the Shape of Water." No, that's a f- no. There's no fish fucking in Creature from the Black Lagoon. Well, there should be. No, there shouldn't be. This is not humanoids from the deep. God damn it! I feel like that if somebody now made a creature from the black lagoon movie that it would look like anaconda oh god you're right it may end up looking like anaconda i mean that's exactly what i feel like it would be somebody would ruin it that bad you know what i mean so and anaconda is a, a, a definitely a fun watch but oh i love anaconda i mean i enjoy watching it you know i i enjoy watching that as much as i enjoy watching lake placid but you know would that be a good? Uh, I, I still want to do. I, one day we have to do the big a- episode that's a triple threat match of Anaconda, Lake Placid, and Deep Blue Sea. That'd be fun. But, Though sometimes I think we should drop Deep Blue Sea and just do Lake Placid and Anaconda because I feel like Deep Blue Sea doesn't look like Lake Placid and Anaconda do. Eh, that's fair. Yeah. Because there are some points when the sharks in Deep Blue Sea don't look as cheesy as uh, as the alligator in Lake Placid and, and the snake in Anaconda. So yeah, so I don't know, uh, uh, but yeah, I would like I would like to see. I remember for a while there was like the rumor of uh, Rob Zombie doing a Creature from the Black Lagoon remake, which is really cool because I always wanted to hear the creature 
uh, talk about fucking his stepdaughter. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking. I was just like, what are we going to have? White trash in the Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just like, how do you fit Texas Chainsaw Massacre inside the fucking Amazon? Well, we're going to find out. Hell yeah, man. Fucking. <laughs> and in the 70s, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, my God. I it, it would just be weird. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, tons of great ideas, guys. Uh I'm sold. If Hollywood does any of these in the next three years, I will know it will be because of us, and we will sue the fuck out of you. Yep. Um, well, right now, these are copyrighted by law, section 532, paragraph 4. It says, Hell yeah, if you I come up with an idea, it is immediately money. copyrighted, and that's my idea, so it's copyrighted. Yeah, I want my fucking money, goddammit. <laughs> yeah, no matter which idea uh, is used, it's split between the three of us. Yeah, agreed. That way we all get fucking paid. Um, Honestly, so, when it really comes down to it, out of everything, I think the best idea so far has been Jay's Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, that shit was thought out, man. Yeah, yeah, I would like, watch all three of those. <laughs> Fuck. The, like, especially like, a, a, off the back of this Halloween trilogy we're getting. Yeah. Like, mm, baby girl, let's go. I actually re- I, I rewatched the new Halloween that came out, and... I didn't really care for it the first time. The second time around, I, I actually enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, I need to rewatch. I've got it on 4K. I uh, watched it during Halloween, during my, my 30 days of Halloween. Uh, but I really enjoyed it the first time. So it really <laughs> it yeah, didn't change anything. It was just an enjoyable well. movie for me. Yeah. So, okay. So with that, uh, with us being back, guys, we've got a couple of questions for you. One. Uh, out of all these remakes we pitch, which one are, would you want to see? Uh, two, what movie would you want to see get remade, and how would it go? And uh, three, what what do you want to see from us at Kill the Cast? What should our next couple episodes be? Do you want a new movie review, an old movie review? Do you want a horror coliseum? Do you want a Jerry hates action? What, what do you What do you fucking want? Give us uh, your opinion and everything. And let us know. And I also want to say shout out to Heather and Scott at Friday Nightmares uh, for putting out episodes and keeping us alive while I while we've been gone. I've had a lot of shit going on in my life. Uh, for those who don't know, my uh, eleven year sh- eleven year relationship ended, and uh, I dipped out for like a m- I went to Georgia for a month. Um, now I'm back up here in Nashville, uh, living with my buddy and shit, and. Uh, all this shit. So let us know what kind of episodes you want us to do, and we'll we'll do them. I've got a couple ideas. I got some some bigger stuff. I've got a really big idea I want to do um, that will take a lot of like pre planning and work to do. I had to write a script for it. You do um, love the big ones. Do love the big ones. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, but let us know and we'll do it. You know, do, do, is it finally time to introduce Jay to hammer horror films? Fuck. Yeah, it is. Um, and which hammer film do we just start with the Frankenstein? Is that what we do? Um, you guys let us know what you fucking want. We're back, baby. And, um, also shout out to my dude, Will from Bay of Blood podcast. He's working on a dope ass design for us. Um, that'll so probably come out. Yeah, that'll come out like two or three months. Um, probably, hopefully, COVID kind of fucks a lot of things up because he works, um, directly in hospitals and shit. So, uh, we're very patient. We're super stoked. Will's doing it. So that'll be coming up soon. Other than that, I don't think we have anything else for you. This was a more relaxed, fit, shorter episode. Um, just to kind of get our feet back wet in that swamp. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Jay, do you have any parting words for the people? You know, speaking of swamps, I wouldn't mind a swamp thing new movie either. Didn't they just do it like a show? They did, and it got canceled, and it was so good. It's weird to me that all the good new, sh- all the good shit now is getting canceled like after one season, and it's like, God damn it, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth, do you have any parting words? Yeah, if anybody has any ideas out there on who they think should play Eric Draven in the remake <laughs> of The Crow, I want to know what pe- who people think should be in that role. Okay, Tom Holland. 
<laughs> no. He can do anything at this point. Did yeah, you guys I'm watch sure. Devil all the time? No. no. Was it good? It, the acting is good. The story leaves a little to be desired. Mm, so if you appreciate mm. good acting, it's worth a watch just to see them act really well. Um, but the story could have been a little a little better put together. See, that's gotcha. another one that I really need to see him in something else. Because I only ever associate him with Peter Parker. Yeah, well, he's about to be Nathan Drake, bitch. Yeah. That's true. Uh, oh, cool, fun story, guys, by the way. When I was at my dad's, we pulled down uh, like a thousand VHSs from his attic. And um, he put it up for sale. And he lives right... Him and Kenneth both live like right near Pinewood Studios. That way, if you find Pinewood Studios, you have a better chance of stalking Kenneth. Um, and uh, a prop master from Pinewood Studios came and bought all the movies uh, from them so that they can use them as props, including uh, being on the set of Stranger Things in the basement for season four. And they offered him double what he was asking for. That's for dope. Uh, the only thing that makes me sad is I, I only took one VHS and it was a, a Lucio Fulci's Gates of Hell VHS. And now I'm kind of like, well, fuck, I would have left it if I would have known Lucio Fulci would have been on the set of Stranger Things. <laughs> so, but I thought that was really fucking dope. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. You will see VHSs that I touched and watched as a kid, uh, dirty. on the set of Stranger Things. Very dirty. Um, but with that, guys, we're going to get out of here. We had a blast coming back. Uh, we'll, we'll have something coming up soon. I promise you we will not take another month off for a while. We'll be back in, in a week or two. And uh, it's full blown ahead. We're, we're coming back stronger than ever. 2021 is going to be the year of the cast. Um, and that's because I'm firing Kenneth and Jay and hiring new people. Oh. Just Damn kidding. Man. I wouldn't fire no, them. You. I was thinking about quitting anyway. No, nah, bitch. I got y'all under contract. Not me. <laughs> Read your <laughs> shit. Jay's coming with me. Oh, I hate when mom That's and all dad I got fight. To say. Who's coming with me? <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you. I'm out. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. We will see y'all shortly. We're glad to be back. We love all of you. Uh, so, you know... Love your cats and kill the cast. Yeah, yeah. Porn. Porn. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.